welcome back to the second part of the sofa tutorial my name is Braden Rent from Second Life and we are going to be going through putting a little bit more detail into the cushions and putting uh, the back cushions on and adding the face to the front of the armrests right okay once you're doing the faces to uh, close something for example like the front of this armrest there's two ways to do it uh, first of all is to create a pole so you can scale to zero that's a bit of a nightmare to text and it look, looks rather ugly so what I'm going to do is I'll undo that and uh, what I'm going to create is a little bit of detail in the front of the arm uh, probably something like some piping or something like that so what I'll do is I will first of all go to front view and then I will do an extrusion and scale that back in again right so okay, right, like so and as we can see it's scaled larger on the Z plane than it has done on the X plane. Uh, just so you know, if you're looking from the front, up and down is the uh, Z plane, left to right is the X plane, and if you go from a side view, forward to back is the Y plane. So any scaling, moving, grabbing, etc., generally follows those planes. So what I'll do is, because it's quite uh, thin, on the X plane, I'm going to scale on X. That should bring it in a little bit more neater, like so. And from there, what we're going to do is we're going to grab that on the Y plane, bring it back a little bit, and then we're going to extrude again and grab that and bring it forward on the Y plane. That'll create a little bit of a recess. Uh, as you can see if I scroll in and then from the front view we'll extrude one more time and we'll scale that and again you're going to have to scale on X in order to bring it in at the sides like and then what we'll do is I'll extrude again and we'll scale that in like that and then we'll grab that and move that back okay right now what we're going to do is we're going to fill in this center part which at the moment is has got a gaping hole so we'll try and equalize the edges by scaling it along the x-axis like that and then what we'll do is we'll fill in the faces uh, to make sure that we've got a certain amount of consistency so you select the four faces like so and fill and we'll continue to do this for as many as we can. Uh, this is where it gets a little bit more confusing because we've got to fill in this last one down here. But then, we'll, and then we can also do. Uh, well, I'll leave the last one there. But what I will do is I'll add an extra loop cut so that it's level with this one, and I'll do one in between. So it's level with the one up. Then what we can do is we can put a loop cut halfway up. I'll scale it along to Z just to square it up. Uh, this button here is limit selection to visible. What it does, it allows you to see through the geometry that you've already created. If you can see if I turn it off, you can now see through the things that are in front of it. So I'll select that vertice and I'll merge those together. For those of you who forgot, merges Alt-M. So I've now merged that to uh, to the last. I'll just make sure that my, uh, my screen keys is on. Right, okay. 
so we've got that uh, that initial one filled in. What I'll also do is I'll fill this one at, at the bottom. Again, all four vertices, press F to fill. Right, and then what we can do is we can uh, add some loop cuts. I never generally get this right first time, so uh, forgive me if I if I don't get the right amount. So I'll put another one in there. And another one in there, so we'll face those off. Face those off. And we carry on facing off any of the holes that we can. We'll just move this one over and we'll face that off. We'll move that one over and that one there. So we can do those four and do those four. These four, and finally, I can move that one up, this one across, and do these four. Okay, so although that's not the most prettiest, uh, prettiest fill in the world, you can move things around and and, and get it a little bit more uh, more neater. What I'll do is I'll straighten these lines up, uh, just because I, I like things to be relatively straight uh, what's the benefit of doing it this way is that when it comes to texturing you have a flat face to texture with uh, rather than a pole uh, for those of you that are used to doing with sculpties uh, poles are, are a little bit of a nightmare and generally cause a, a bit of a pinch effect which isn't very attractive uh, texture wise okay and I'll just uh, I'll those. Right. As you can see, we've now got the arm of the sofa uh, reasonably well done. Uh, we can uh, just bring these down a little bit so, so that they're more in line with the X plane. Uh, modeling okay so this is the arm of the sofa uh, we've still got no back on it we don't really need to worry about that right now uh, what I am going to do though is I'm going to add an extra loop cut here right, and then I'll add another one there the reason that is is because the last one I'm going to scale to zero uh, it will be a pole, but to be completely honest, uh, with regards to things that have its back to the wall, I, I don't think we really need to worry uh, about how attractive it is. Uh, and it does cost uh, vertices wise uh, if you do this kind of scenario rather than just doing a pole. Uh, we've got the right shape anyway, so I'm not particularly worried about that. Uh, I am going to add just another loop cut here uh, to try and uh, take a little bit of that angular nature off. Right, make sure. Let's just have a look at from the side view. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so right, we can say that to a large degree that the uh, the arm is complete. Uh, it should hold its shape relatively well at this point with the LOD. Uh, we'll be worrying more about LODs later uh, because when making objects for Second Life, your LOD value is quite important uh, for viewing things at a distance. But for now, uh, that's the arm done. Uh, as you can see, it's a mirror, so therefore it will copy everything over to the left-hand side. Uh, in order for the back cushion, what I'm going to do is get the seat cushion. I'm going to highlight one of the vertices and then press Control L. That will select everything in that singular mesh. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a side view, which is number pad 3. And I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate. And then I can grab that, like so, and I can rotate it. In this instance, 
90 degrees. I will then grab it with a G and move it up so it's on the back of the sofa. Now, as you can see, it's, it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit large uh, for this particular sofa. It's also your choice as to whether you want the seat cushions to be on top or, of course, behind or or for it to average in the middle. Uh, I find with most things that you uh, you create, it's a good idea to have a look in real life to see uh, what you may have around uh, that's similar to what you're trying to do. Uh, in this instance with the sofa, there's so many of this design of sofa on the internet, you'll easily be able to find this uh, design, or you may even have it in your lounge. Uh, so what we're gonna do is, uh, we've got the sofa there, <coughs> excuse me, and I'm going to uh, add some more loop cuts to the top of the sofa. Uh, the reason this is so that we can have the overhang. Right, I will then, uh, I will box select these vertices out. And then I'll turn on something called proportional editing. Uh, proportional editing is this little donut at the bottom of the screen. And what that does, it allows you to have influence over the other vertices that are connected or around uh, the ones that you've selected so for example if I turn it on and I say enable uh, in order to know the shortcut it's O for, to turn it on and off and if I uh, if I grab that you'll see a large circle appear that's the influence radius uh, on the rest of the prims uh, sorry less of the vertices in that mesh so if I say to grab it and I go to move it, you'll see it, it's moving everything uh, in that radius. Now, the other option for uh, proportional editing is to have connected. Now, connected will only influence the vertices that are part of that same mesh. So I can grab it now and move it. And as you can see, it no longer affects the arm. It doesn't f affect any other vertices of, of any other part of the mesh. Right, so we can grab that uh, with a G, and I'm going to move it on the X plane. So I'll, I'll pull that out a little bit. And as you can see, I've got uh, the influence with the mouse wheel, like so. So I'll bring that out to, I would say, roughly about there. It's not ideal at the present moment. Uh, because what I'm ultimately going to do is I'm going to do a knife cut. Uh, along the back. The back of the sofa generally takes a lot longer to do than the front uh, but I will uh, I will go and I will uh, let me just highlight these rows here right and then I'll deselect with a B and alt and I'll go over them and that will deselect like that and then I'm going to go to a sideways view and I use the knife tool now the knife tool is you press K and then you draw a line over your highlighted vertices and then release the mouse button like that. And as you can see, it actually cuts the vertices in half. Now, uh, this is a really good way to try and save uh, your vertices when you're modeling. And that is try not to have loop cuts everywhere if you can avoid it. So I've selected those, uh, I'm gonna highlight them and I'll grab those and move them on the X plane. I don't want an awful lot of influence. So we can do it like that. And that can bring up uh, the, the top of the arm. Uh, because of uh, the proportional, I'm just gonna move the, the arm of the, the uh, sofa up and move the bottom of it back down to the ground. Okay, so we've kind of started to get it really sh taking shape on how we want it at the present moment. It's now come up to 15 minutes. So uh, for this tutorial, I'd like to say thank you very much and uh, I'll see you on the next part. Goodbye.